cool. You did that. Like when I, when I would park my car, niggas would just walk by that shit and be like, God damn, this shit wasn't even a foreign. This was like a dodge. <laughs> but, you know, in Harlem, you know, the, 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 the thing is like you got to drive up 8th Avenue in that brand new whip. You know what I'm saying? Fresh to death. And I did that a couple times, like, you know what I'm saying? But that Magnum was special. <laughs> My name was ringing bells with that. That's what's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harlem dudes is funny. Even when we was talking earlier, <laughs> you, 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 you had a difference with Diddy, but you was like, but, you know, at the end of the day, he from Harlem, though. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, he's it, Harlem. I don't, I don't have no difference with Diddy. Diddy is like one of my idols. Like, I love Diddy. You know what I'm saying? I just think that, you know. Like but I y'all, said, Harlem, I, y'all always have love for if you like it's like an extra bonus. Like we the flyest dudes. Like come on funny. now, but how, like like Diddy, I call him Diddy Bob. <laughs> uh-huh. But Diddy, Diddy Bob is that dude. Like at the end of the day, like he he, he how can I say it? Like he is Harlem. You know he's what Harlem is about. Like, but at the end of the day, I call a spade a spade. So mm-hmm. I could have like the most love for you and all that, but. If you do something wrong, and I ain't talking about Diddy, I'm just saying in general, like, I'm going to call it. I don't have no bias to nothing, like, as far as re- being real. You know, you should never, you should never, you should always be able to tell somebody they fault that you see in them, honestly. Speaking of doing, speaking honestly and connecting it with Harlem, um, and we were just talking about Diddy, DMX is on record to say that he don't like most of those executives and all that, but he said he, he loved Diddy because Diddy told him he didn't have the sound that he was looking for. And he was like, everybody else was bullshitting with the money, playing with the money. But it was like, he, he said, Diddy, he actually told me like, yo, that's not the sound I'm looking. You're dope, but that's not the sound that I'm looking. He told him straight up without bullshit. Yeah, but I mean, like at the end of the day, did he know music? And did he did he had a sound that he was known for? Yeah, like did he created a culture inside of the culture? And you know that's hard to do. So like at the end of the day, you got to fit his criteria for what he want to do because at the end of the day, hip hop is a culture. Then you had the bad boy culture <laughs> inside of hip hop. So. You had to fit that. And DMX didn't fit that at the time. Nah. Mm. You know? But like I said, Diddy, Diddy, Diddy is amazing, like as far as what he do and, and, and stuff like that. But like now, what Diddy have to do, in my humble opinion, is he has to create like millionaires now. Like what mm. Jay-Z is doing right now, that's what Diddy have to do. You gotta create a whole crew a young, fresh dude that's rich. Ain't no more taking the money. You got enough money you can spend. Now it's time to create young black millionaires that come from up under your umbrella. And he did it. I ain't saying he didn't, but I'm talking about in business. Yeah. Not just selling records and all of that. Um, how you feel about Murder Moot? I mean, he's a battle rapper. He's from Harlem. I ain't got nothing against him, but you know, like I'm, 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 I'm a hip hop purist. So, like at the end of the day, like I said, I would need to hear him on an album with some concepts, with beats, original beats, you know, stuff like that. So, I'm not gonna critique him because he's a hell of a battle rapper, and I ain't taking nothing from him. I ain't trying to play him. I ain't got nothing bad to say about him. But as far as musically and like albums, I, I, like I'm an album kind of guy. So at the end of the day, I would have to hear that to actually critique him. So I really don't have nothing to say about him as far as musically, but uh, 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 hip hop battle, he's a monster. Yeah, he is. I heard one of his songs, but I don't, he's like one of those people I can't see crossing over to actually make a good song. Right. But he's like, dope, like. Yeah, you gotta be able to make a good song for yeah. me. Like, I like to drive in my car and zone out and listen. And like, your words got to touch my soul. Like, that's just, like, people don't understand, like, with Tupac. Tupac didn't have to be the best lyricist. When he spoke, yeah, you got the chills. That's what music is about. Like, we don't have to 
dummy it down or dial it up. Hip hop is about a moment and what that moment does for you when you're listening to it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like with Mary J. Blige, most of her music ain't complex, but it's, it's, uh -huh. it's you feel it. You see what I'm saying? Like, like you feel her music in her soul. She, she, she didn't, she doesn't have that intricate music. It's nah. just good music. Yeah, I never actually thought about it. That's actually pretty funny. Because she's not the greatest singer in the world. She can't no. hit all the notes. But no. you definitely feel. You yes, her songs, is, her, songs, her songs could beat those people who could sing songs any day. Mm -hmm. But that's why the music thing is not always about, it's not predicated all on talent. Yeah. You have to be a star. You have to have it. Like, whatever it is, you have to have it. it you got to have talent, but it's not always the, the deciding factor. Mm. You know? Who would you say is the greatest business person that you, that you know of? Whoa. You, 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 got, you, you got to look at it as... Uh, What's the guy's name from Africa? Um, Mansa Musa. <laughs> he sold all those slaves. He was the first billionaire. <laughs> and this was before <laughs> white people was making money. So Mansa Musa is the, is, is the best businessman. Why is he the best businessman now? He made the most money in a time where it wasn't even like that. You Wait, know what so I mean? Have you heard of Mansa Musa? I've heard of him. No, I you got to do the research. Religion. You have to do the research. And we'll, we'll come back and talk about it again. Mansa Musa? Yes, King Mansa Musa. <laughs> this is a black man. Yeah. yeah. That made, and he had billions of dollars way back then. <laughs> That's crazy that you just said that. Somebody that I really respect actually just said it to me. And now that, that you're, but that wasn't your, like your answer that I, that just came out of nowhere. That was just like the Malcolm X and how you explain how he has that connection with Harlem. He wasn't born in Harlem. That's very interesting. You just said, that's crazy. No, he, you didn't expect me to say Mansa Musa. I did not. Right. That's the thing. Just like when I told you about, the bridge is over. You didn't expect me to say KRS one. No. But I'm gonna explain something to you. That's what I aspire to be. I don't want to be a person that you can put your finger on and say, "I, I expect him to do this." I, the, my, to me, my greatest strength is that that when you're talking to me, I'm gonna say something that you never even expected, or I'm gonna do something that you never even expected. That's a part of evolving. And, and, and opening up your mind to other things. Man, that's what, was, now I that's what reading. That's what reading gets you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm. When you read, you you you'll find out about other cultures and other people, and then you'll realize, like, oh, Donald Trump ain't the only person that made a billion dollars. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like there, there, there's black rich people, man. <laughs> You know, but, and I'm talking about this is from back then. I'm not saying how he got his money was right, but as a businessman to make billions of dollars in that time, in that age, in that era, oh, he's the best. He made more money than everybody still to this day. Well, maybe not the um the guy, uh, Jeff Bezos from um, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a monster. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is the dude, but I'm, I, I, the reason why I'm giving Mansa Musa over him, Mansa Musa didn't have technology. <laughs> he made he made billions of dollars with no technology. <laughs> <laughs> like that's amazing. Yeah, that's actually really good. I'm yeah. excited. I'm I'm excited, and I hope the listeners are too. That that's actually very exciting and enlightening. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. I, with me, I want to push the envelope. I, we have to teach these young guys that 
being smart is is cool. Like you don't. A lot of these young guys think that being smart is not cool, and and, and to actually be dumb is cool. That's the dumbest thing in the world to me. Like being a good parent is 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 cool. Uh, 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 taking care of your kids is cool. Having reading comprehension, like knowing how to read a book and understand it, that's cool. You can dress like street people. You can even act like street people, but that don't mean you have to be dumb and ignorant. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we have to change the narrative of what's really is cool. Because you got to understand something, right? And I tell my nephews this all the time. A smart person could act dumb. But then around dumb people, he could act dumb. But then when he get around smart people, he could act smart. So now he has both sides of the spectrum. A dumb person can't act smart because he's not smart. So he's only relegated to the dumb people. <laughs> so it's better to be smart because you're smart enough that where you say, I, I could dummy it down and act stupid, but I also can be smart. So now you could talk in every conversation and then you could bring up the dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> you got to uplift them. <laughs> they say you can bring them up. It's the truth. But yeah. a dumb person can't. So, you know, you, it's always better to be smart. And people don't got to understand that it's cool to know things. The, the, the worst thing in the world is to be around people and they're having a conversation and you're oblivious to it. You know what that feels like? Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's why we have to educate ourselves on various things and, and topics because even if you have a sense of understanding something, then you could be in the conversation and then you might learn something or you might meet somebody that might change your life. This is why a lot of our, our, our young men as black people are stagnant because they're not meeting and connecting with the right people. How do you think college fraternities and all of that, they take care of each other? Yeah, they do. How do you think OJ got into TV and commercials and movies and all that? He went to the College of Hollywood. So all his peers and his fraternity brothers end up being big movie executives and TV executives, and they knew him from school, so they just pulled him right in. <laughs> That's fact. That's the truth. That's the thing. We have to learn how to, to, to connect and, and, and talk and, and, and talk and understand other things so when we in these circles we might meet a person that think oh this guy's charismatic and he know his stuff i want to do something with him and that's cool you see what i'm trying to say running around the block with your pants sagging down with your sneakers untied and, and, and you high all day that could be cool for you but that's not really cool in reality <laughs> All right, I got two, the two two last questions I wanted to ask you. Sure. Um, you just referenced this. Um, you you said we need to change the narrative of yeah. what's cool, and you were just saying about you. One of the things you included was taking care of your kids. Yes. Um, we see. I see it a little bit different than most people. Most people just see it as, oh, there's people who don't take care of their kids. Whereas I see it as these people who don't take care of their kids, there are, there's our sons, there are uh, uncles, there are uh, cousins, there are uh, roommates. What do you mean? Elaborate. Why? Are th so many parents getting away with not take? Why are we accepting? We we're so accepting to people who don't take care of their children. Like, if I know one of my boys don't take care of their kids, if they haven't spoken to him in two months or three months, and I know that, I gotta yeah. ask him. Right. Like, right. yo, what's going on? What happened? What's going Hold on? Hold on. Do you see what you're saying? Right. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to do for that one particular question. Okay. I want to dedicate a show to that. 
Okay. So we, I'm not even.